Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe. Raw last night was great. It was a flat out great show. There were multiple great segments, but there are a couple that stick out. First off, the finish kind of sucked, but Sheamus and Pete Dunne as a match ruled because this is the best. Sheamus is like, he's, he's entered his Ishii phase where he's very old, but like every time he gets in the ring, like it's awesome. Him and Pete Dunne pummeled, pummeled each other. And the fans, let me tell you something. They should just move. You know, it's like a Northeast company. They should move to the Northwest. These crowds in Seattle and Portland, they ate everything up on both of these shows. So this match was great. And then Pete hits him with a freaking cricket bat, which I think was like a Not cricket. Cleanly. It was a cricket bat for giants who play cricket. I mean, those this, are harder than baseball thing bats. Was like the size of a of an oar. I mean, oh, it was like eight small. feet long. You know. But he hit him with it, kind of. Long stick. But that was a, that was a really good match. Then we had my favorite thing on the show, and no, it was not the women's match, although that was very good. It's supposed to be Bronson Reed and Braun Strowman, which, by the way, I don't know. I don't. You know, a lot of things Vince did were stupid, but I will say he was right about names. Because we now have a Braun, a Braun, and a Bronson. And it is murder for me to try to recap these segments. So we had Bronson and Braun. I hope they have graphics. <laughs> Bronson and Braun are supposed to have a match. So before the bell rings, Braun avoids a charge. Bronson hits the corner. And the entire top rope snaps off and the ring is destroyed. And already the fans are like, oh my God, it's on. So they won't ring the bell. These guys start brawling all over the place. Braun goes for his freight train spot. And all of a sudden, as he's running, <laughs> a body flies through the air and wipes him out. And I legit thought a fan did like a flying high cross and took him out. And so they explain that Bronson threw the fan. This was awesome. Okay. And I was infuriated because this is so unlike WWE. They didn't get one good shot of it. The best shot they had, you could still barely see it. But Bronson threw a fan at Braun Strowman. It was a planted <laughs> fan, obviously. But, you know, they could both go down. And then, you know, Bronson kind of stumbles off. And then Braun goes running, and he tackles him through the barricade. They're both dead. So they send out all these nerds to break it up. And Bronson starts walking to the back. And Bronson ring goes, come on! But Bronson won't come back. So Braun goes after him. They start brawling backstage and, you know, they're fighting and beating each other up. And Braun throws Bronson into a wall. And then for reasons unknown, just because he's strong and it's there, he tips over this golf cart and the camera gets all weird. But then when the when the video comes back, all you see is a flying Bronson. Reed. He flies in and wipes this guy out, puts him through a table. The place is going nuts. So they're both dead again, and the geeks are trying to break him up. And finally, Bronson's like, he slowly gets to his feet, and he starts stumbling over to this, and he's near a wall backstage. And then Braun jumps up from this rubble, and he goes running, and he spears Bronson through the wall. And as awesome as this was, they both go through the wall. The smoke kind of rises a little bit. And all of a sudden, there's a delay, which is the best part. All of a sudden, you hear, clang, 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 like a bunch of pots and pans fall out of the sky. I was crying. It was like a cart. It was like the Wile E. Coyote. You know, they both, he falls off the cliff, and then there's a delay, and then the boulder falls on him for good measure. This was amazing. Can Absolutely you, amazing. Can I ask you a question? Why do you not review old memphis wrestling which is on youtube and accessible to everybody on shows with Vinny, you would love that i'm sure show i would you would love this stuff i'm sure i would but this was this was 4k brother on max plus <laughs> i loved it and then yes one of the best women's matches you can see all year on tv bianca belair and eo sky uh, the word we keep getting is they saw the uh tamara mensa stock match with uh Kendall Gray. Kendall Gray, and which apparently 
I was told was I got to find this match. It's awesome. I was told it was better than this match. Level up. And these two decided, well, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do it. And they went in and they worked so hard. And they're doing all this athleticism. And this match absolutely ruled. Clean finish. EO pins her with a small package. I mean, as far as like on WWE, Raw, or SmackDown, I don't think there was a better women's match all year than this match. It was great. Yeah, with the team with Jade, you forget how great Bianca can be in singles matches. And with Asuka out, Io Sky really is the best woman, I think, in that division. Rhea's a bigger star, but man, you need to have somebody like Io around. And we had some other good stuff. Priest versus Dom main event was good, and then they did the big angle afterwards. Dave is insistent that uh, the Survivor Series is a war games with the bloodline, but I am not 100%. I am not 100%. I think that it's possible it's going to be a Judgment Day war games and then a women's war games as well because it just seems weird that if it's going to be the bloodline, you're, you're giving away Roman and Cody versus Solo and Jacob Fatu. You're giving that away next month. That's bigger than adding another bunch of dorks to the match. God bless them and all. But, like, these are the four most important guys in the few. They're having a tag match. If so, you're going to do three war games, make the whole show like oh DNA God, no. Do all No, you have to. Do four matches and they all that's have to be That's overkill, like brother. That. Then do three. But to me, if you do two, that's fine. Even that's overkill. Sometimes having a women's and a men's. But you can only have two. And we had, uh, what else did we have? Eh, just a bunch of promos and matches. Judgment Day and New Day for the tag titles was it was a fine match, but it had a good finish. Where Xavier, he had the win, but Kofi had to do a trust dive. And they had a big argument afterwards, and Xavier made a great point. Why did you tell these guys to watch our back, but you didn't bother telling me you were going to say that? And he storms off. Back in a moment, Observer Live. In the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. So tonight, Brian and Vinny and Granny and Craig and Sean show's back, and it's uh, primetime wrestling. God, we got to get through this show. Got to get to Mania 3. Although I've been told that this show is uh, uh, much better than last week's, which may have had the worst match of the 80s. Absolutely, completely atrocious opener. Who were the uh, participants? It was Sika versus Moondog Spot. <laughs> and let me guess, it was like from like the garden or something like it that. It was so. absolutely, positively <laughs> atrocious, this match. This is the March 9, 87 this week. And I heard it's much better. March 9, 1987. Mm-hmm. Although as bad as the show was last week, it did have that Hulk Hogan, King Kong, Bunny main event from Saturday Night's main event. Uh, that match ruled so it was not a complete waste of time hey if you love this clip have i got a deal for you wrestlingobserver.com do you have a commute do you work out at the gym do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today well wrestlingobserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.